Yo, ladies and gents, what is happening? It's your boy, Cy B, once again, with the festive top on. Look at that, guys. You know, look at that. Look at that. I should be a model or something for Versace or something, you know. But if any brands out there, you know, want your boy to, um, you know, <laughs> model any clothing, you know, by all means, send me the free designer clothes and I'll um, show it off for you, no problem. <laughs> but but anyway, guys, joking aside, I hope everybody's well. Having a great weekend. So I was going to do a video today. Um, sorry, I wasn't going to do a video today. I was struggling for content, but then I've seen that, um, you know, the ghost of eight, not eight thoughts, eight thoughts, whatever he is um, <laughs> calling himself these days. <laughs> What's he doing with that mask on? <laughs> I've got no idea. Anyway, who knows? He might be like Simon Cowell and he's had some kind of plastic surgery gone wrong. But anyway, who knows? Um, yeah, so eight thoughts has done a video. Um, Blame Lies, who um, expects donations from, um, you know, kids from the pocket money when he's made millions of pounds over the years on YouTube. He's done a video on it as well. Basically saying that Call of Duty has lost, you know, 60% of its player base already. Or at least, you know, that's what we can see, you know, from Steam charts. Again, they're saying that apparently there's sources out there somewhere that claims that it's the same on console. And to be fair, even if you didn't have that information at hand, you kind of expect that, you know, it's going to be a similar kind of a scenario between the PC player base and the console. I know the kind of players it caters to is, you know, slightly different. But again, Steam charts, viewers, you, figures you can actually view, you know, tend to be, you, you know, pretty accurate. And what I can say about this, and hence why my video is titled this way, that I am actually happy that the game is tanking right now. I think I showed a graph, you know, with the um, trend line going downwards a, a, a few videos ago, what I used. But I'm actually happy. For once, the Call of Duty community is actually doing something, you know, positive instead of continuing to buy microtransactions while my dog's barking in the background. Brilliant. But again, it looks like people are stopping buying the microtransactions, especially in Warzone, which I'll talk about in a second. People are stopping to play the game, you know, as in Modern Warfare 2, the multiplayer version of the game. That's fantastic. You know, they've already come out with a free weekend, so you know they're desperate. You know, it's probably a week before Christmas, they're thinking, need to get these sales up, guys, we're not doing brilliant. I know how it works in boardrooms, meetings like that. I've been involved in them myself. They're constantly wanting you to push and push and push and push and get the most sales as possible. I can guarantee you that this free weekend is there for kids to actually try to get them hooked so mummy and daddy will spend some of that cash, get them playing the game just before Christmas, and then they'll start smashing out, you know, the uh, microtransactions such as camos, voice lines, stickers, all that kind of crap, what nobody cares about. Obviously, camos look co good and cool, but again, you've got to have your core game right before you start trying to sell microtransactions to people. Back when Warzone 1 was in Vidansk, when I was actually enjoying the game, I bought camos because I don't mind supporting a free-to-play video game when the actual game itself, you know, is in a good state. I did it with Fortnite many years ago. You know, free-to-play games are great, but they've got to be up to scratch, in my opinion, before they start smashing out added content. And Warzone 2 is doing that right now. Players aren't happy with the game. Thankfully, Infinity Ward have now took a back seat and Raven Studios are actually going to be the ones leading the way now on Warzone 2.0, which is great because, again, Raven do a great job online. Again, this channel isn't just about me talking rubbish and shit and smack talking or talking, you know, hateful stuff about, you know, Call of Duty and, you know, video games in general. I'm, I'm fair with my critique, I think, in most instances. Not everybody likes me. Some people think I'm a prick. Well, that's fine, you know. That's, that's how I am. Even my missus don't like me most of the time. So... <laughs> Again, if viewers are watching and you don't like me, that's fine. But I, I always say what I honestly think. And I think that Warzone 2, I know that some people like it, just like some people like multiplayer. I get that. You know, it's subjective, most of it. But ultimately, Warzone 2, for me, is a bore fest. It's boring. I don't like that they've got rid of loadout drops, which, to be fair, I never thought they would have because that drives the whole microtransaction system. It was always in what, what, what happened in Warzone 1 was that You'd basically kill a few people, run around, get some money. You'd call in your loadout drop. Now, what would happen is that the meta would shift depending on what camo was available. So, for example, when the Grau meta came, oh, look, the Grau, you know, best gun in the game, it suddenly got a new bundle. How convenient. And then they nerf the Grau, and then another weapon comes, you know, and 
is the most popular, most overpowered weapon. And oh, look, that weapon suddenly has, you know, a new camo, what's £20. You see what I mean? So I, I, I kind of did not think seriously that loadouts wouldn't be in Warzone 2. And it would surprise me if at some point the developers don't actually integrate this again because it makes them loads of money. But what we're seeing, and we're going to look at the Steam charts right now. I don't really want to ramble on too long about this video. Again, these numbers are for Steam only. So if people are playing Modern Warfare on your console or Warzone on your console, if you're playing it in the Blizzard app, these aren't going to be here. But again, it's a good indicator of the general kind of feel of what the player base has got. So today, currently playing the game is 232,000. The peak amount of players it's had is 488,000. So again, the last 30 days, the average players was 239,000. I should imagine these figures are for Warzone as well. But again, look at the peak players. It's roughly lost 30%. Let me go back one, sorry, because you can't really see it that well. Let me zoom in a bit. But basically, they have lost 50%. Almost, 50, yeah, just over 50% of players already. And again, finally, I've got something positive to say about the Call of Duty community. It looks like now you've finally had enough of all the shit what we get in Call of Duty games where instead of them fixing the game, they bring out more content. They don't listen to what the community wants. You know, the new raid, why is it not matchmaking in raid? They were saying that it's going to take people two hours to do. People doing it and smashing it first runs in 30 minutes. Why is that not a matchmaking, you know, game mode? Destiny does it, other games do it. So why is there no matchmaking? Laziness, that's what it is lazy, lazy developers. And even if you do the raid, the new raid, the rewards are shit anyway. <laughs> There's straight up no point of doing it. You know, DMZ, they over, the over buffed the AI, so it was near enough impossible to play solo. Raven Studios have already come in. They've addressed that. They've actually lowered the AI down again so you don't get, you know, headshot from 400 meters away. Somebody sat crouching AI with an SMG, just one shot headshots here. You know, so... Uh, uh, at least Raven Studios have actually come in now. They've took the mantle off of Infinity Ward, who are just straight up garbage now. And how many years can a development team live on, you know, previous successes? You know, the last decent game Infinity Ward made was Modern Warfare 3. I don't really think they've made a good game since then. Again, let me know, guys, girls, in the comment section, do you agree with that? Honestly, do, do, do you agree with that? St pause this video right now and type in what you think. Um, but ultimately... I think the last game they made, what was up to scratch, was Modern Warfare 3. It's that long ago. You know, Infinity War, back in the day, used to be my favourite developer, believe it or not. Because obviously they made Modern Warfare 2 as well, my favourite game. Again, I think the majority of people actually think Black Ops 2 is the best Call of Duty game ever. But, you know, ultimately, I, I don't really want to go over, you know, in too much detail why I'm happy that people are stopping to play in this game now. But, you know, the amount of bugs crashes every time i open up and try to play warzone for a bit i open it up i do a download an update i open the game up which takes way too long anyway you know on a four thousand pound pc and then it says restart required and then i have to do it again every single time why why do i have to restart it after i've downloaded all the update no other game i have to do that again the ui in this game is the worst ui i have ever seen in any video game ever. A user interface is supposed to be simple. It's supposed to make the navigation process as easy as possible. It does the complete opposite in this game. I've already said Warzone 2.0 is too slow for my liking, but again, that's subjective, but according to the player numbers, it's going down. There's other Twitch streamers, YouTube streamers, YouTube content creators. They're all complaining about the views are dropping for Warzone, and obviously they've got nowhere else to go. Funnily enough, Apex is actually the one with the most view, sorry, with the most concurrent players at the moment from a Battle Royale point of view, what we can actually see the stats on. I'm assuming Fortnite's got more than that, but anyway, stats what we can actually see. You know, Apex is the biggest. You know, again, kill streaks, score streaks, they're pretty much useless these days. Everybody used to love running around, getting all the really high end kill streaks. That's what we used to enjoy. That was the kind of. 
that was kind of the thing what kept you playing, you know, that you knew, obviously, skill-based matchmaking wasn't, you know, a thing back then, even though they say it was, but it wasn't because my gameplays had varied massively. Like, one game I'd do absolutely terrible. Then the next game I'd be, the, you know, I'd, I'd be pub-stomping, getting 100 kills in a 9v9 ground war. But then the game after, I'd be like mid to bottom of my leaderboard on my team. So, you know, you got years ago variety, you know, in the matches. Now it's just a constant grind to get one KD. Again, I've made a video about it, why that is. And and and, and this is the biggest thing for me right out of everything, ladies and gents. Gunsmith in Modern Warfare 2019 was a great addition. But it's got to that point now that there's that many different attachments on Gunsmith, and the Wevel, sorry, it's just overcomplicated. It's like the stupid weapon unlocking and leveling that every other COD game ever has had. You use a certain weapon, you unlock all the attachments for that weapon while you're using it. You unlock a weapon when you get to, like, level 50 or something like that. Okay, that's fine. We understand that. But now you've got to unlock a weapon before you can unlock another weapon, then you've got to unlock the attachments by levelling up a separate weapon for the attachments on a totally different weapon. You know, talk about ridiculous. I'm trying not to swear because YouTube doesn't like it, you know, when the F-bombs get dropped. But that is the most stupid, absolute stupid decision any developer has ever made in the history of video games. I'm not even joking. Imagine that you're using an AK-47 and you've got to use that weapon to unlock attachments, I don't know, on an ACR. Absolutely brain dead. Straight up brain dead. But the problem is, in today's developer game wokeness society, is that even if somebody has a bad decision and they should be, you know, told that you're full of shit, that's not going in the game, we live in a society where it's like, Oh, right. Great idea. Well done. Well done, Robert. Great idea. Just let let Robert go with it. We don't want to upset him. He thinks he's had a great idea. Let's just let him do it. No, he needs somebody to say, Robert, you shit. You shit. Get fired. Fuck off. That's what should be said to Robert. Fuck off. You're fired. Get on the dole. Great. I've sworn now, so that's screwed. But honestly, you, you know, just clueless developers who don't play the game, they've got no interest in Call of Duty or even gaming in general, all they're good at is milking money from people. And ultimately, that's why the game is suffering. But at least now, and I've said this in loads, loads of different videos, guys, girls, I said this in loads of different videos, until Activision stop making as much money, nothing will change. And the only way things will change is like, you know, what we've seen here, thank you again for Blame Lies and Eight Thoughts for bringing this to my attention, is that the only way they will change anything is if they stop making money. And obviously, because it's a live service, yes, I know everybody's paid 50, 60 quid for the game, but again, they're playing, the majority of people are just buying the game so they can level weapons up to use then in Warzone. That's why, let's, let's be real, chat. But again, people stop playing the game. It's a live service game. Live service means they're constantly bringing out paid-for content on a free-to-play video game. If people aren't playing it, they're going to have to change something to get people back. Otherwise, the old business model of a live service doesn't work. But anyway, guys, I've rambled on long enough. If you're new here, please hit that subscribe button You know, for more light-hearted content on the channel um, where we can have some um, in-depth conversations and not taking things too seriously. But if you've liked the video, please leave a like. Once this video gets to, I don't know, 200 likes, I'll do another video, and yeah, if I don't do a video for somehow um, until Christmas, have a Merry Christmas, guys, and a Happy New Year. But again, I'm on the grind at the moment, so you're going to get a video more than likely tomorrow. All right, love you all. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.